Tuesday, April 14th, 2020, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. The price of gold is breaking out. It's off to the races as the debt bubble continues to inflate. The debt is going parabolic, and that's what I want to talk about today. Yes, it's nice that the price of gold is making new highs for the year, but more importantly, we need to keep an eye on the debt. I'm going to touch upon a couple of books as well. What has government done to our money? Many of you probably have had a look at this book or bought this book and read it. I've recommended it many times, but for the new viewers, I think it's uh, very important. The other one that I think is key to read is Fiat Money, Inflation in France by Andrew Dixon White. I read this book back in the early 2000s. And from reading this book, I understood which path we were on in terms of the monetary system, in terms of the debt. That will also uh, help you understand where we are and where we're going to end up. So let's quickly look at the markets and gold, of course. Have a look at a couple of charts. So it's 8.25 a.m. Spot gold is off slightly, less than a dollar. It's at 17.11. Uh, we've made a new high today overnight at 17.27. The low has been around 17.08. So before I go further, let's look at the chart of gold. And uh, this is a weekly chart. As you can see, uh, these are uh, the, the lines here at Fibonacci retracement levels. If you go back uh, to the 38.2%, of course, uh, that was why that 1375 level was so important for a few years until we broke out of it last year. It was around 1375, 1380 or thereabouts. Basically, this Fibonacci retracement is uh, calculating the retracement levels from the all-time high in 2011 to the low in December of 2015 there. 38.2 uh, and 61.8, they're like the golden mean, and that's why they're so important. 50% uh, as well is quite important. You can see that uh, there's a little bit of consolidation there towards the end of last year after the high in September around that level. And yeah, it's been volatile, but it looks like uh, now uh, there is this 76.4% retracement here, but uh, that's not very important. So am I saying we're going to uh, new highs, all time highs uh, this week or next week? No, but uh, I don't expect it to take too long now for us to see 1900 and possibly 2000. It's uh, off to the races. Uh, in my opinion. And why why do I say that? Well, because in our current monetary system, the flip side of uh, debt is uh, the money. And uh, with what the central bankers and the politicians are doing, uh, creating trillions upon trillions uh, at a stroke of a pen. I saw uh, President Trump the other day signing uh, that... Uh, potential 6.2 trillion package and uh, he seemed very proud to sign that uh, but uh, it's only going to make life harder for current generations and future generations all that debt of course unless that is written off very quickly unless there's a collapse yeah we'll be stuck or Americans will be stuck with that debt for generations same things happening here in the UK. So let's quickly look at the debt clock. The other day I spoke about the debt clock and we were up already another 100 billion, 24.237 trillion. Uh, we we're almost at 113% of GDP. But to me, more concerning is if you uh, move uh, forward in the time machine to 2024. And this, this is moving really, really, uh, fast parabolically i would say and we're almost at 37 trillion as you can see there and more worryingly uh the federal debt to gdp look where it is before 2024 175.7 percent and i would say that's going to increase even more as 
the Fed and the Treasury continue their bailout uh, of big banks, of corporations, not so much of the general public. So that's why I don't think it's over. Uh, as I said, the, the debt is the flip side of money. And the more money you create, it's the simple law of supply and demand, uh, the less it will be worth against tangible goods, and especially against commodity money, which is gold and has been for thousands of years. So let's continue with the, uh, the prices, the markets. Uh, spot silver is actually uh, outperforming a little bit. Of course, uh, silver has a long way to go <laughs> to catch up with gold. It's up 12 cents or 0.8 of a percent at 1548. Uh, the stock market is back up this morning. Uh, yesterday, of course, the Dow dropped uh, over 300 points. Right now, we're up 340, 23,740. S&P is up 1.5% or 40 points at 28.02. NASDAQ 100 future is up 132 points or 1.6%. Uh, yeah, I, I'm still not convinced about the stock market. Uh, I, I've seen some uh, headlines about uh, JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs calling bottoms uh, for the stock market. I'm not too sure. I'm going to go against the grain. Uh, Quickly look at the Dow Gold Ratio. That's an interesting chart as well. This shows you how actually the Dow topped in September 2018 versus gold. And right now, we're uh, going through a little bit of a consolidation in that uh, the Dow is holding on for now. But I think that's going to turn south and we're going to see that ratio continue to drop. That means that gold is going to outperform the stock market. And I think that's the other thing I wanted to talk about today is that you shouldn't be too concerned about the fiat price of gold, be it in dollars or sterling or euro. You need to be looking at uh, how much of uh, other assets gold is going to buy you per ounce or per gram, because that's what gold is all about. Gold is money. Yet, and I have focused on the price action today. But uh, I would say that the most important thing is to uh, try to increase your reserves <laughs> by grams or ounces or tons, of course, uh, if you are very wealthy or if you are a sovereign country. That's what you need to focus on. Don't be too fixated on the price. And I know we all can do that. What about the currency? Sterling a little stronger, up uh, half a percent, 125.60. Uh, the price of gold in uh sterling is at 1365 uh we're not uh making all-time highs here but of course we've broken through the 2011 all-time high a long time ago i guess we need to uh break through 1400 to see an acceleration in the xau gbp euro uh up slightly at 109.30. The dollar is unchanged versus the Japanese yen, 107.67. And uh, WTI crude is up 2%, 28.50. Bond market, the 10 year yield is up one basis point at uh, 0.76. And I see that the 30 year yield is up uh, one and a half at 140. So bond market is fairly uh, stable at the moment. The books now, fiat money inflation in France. It's one of the classics and, and you can find uh, free PDFs. It's not a long book. So the, the full title is fiat money inflation in France, how it came, what it brought and how it ended by Andrew Dixon White. I'll just go through uh, the back of the book here. They talk a little bit about the book. In 1790, the French people, by general acquiescence, embarked upon what they believed to be a harmless experiment in currency inflation. It's, what, it's what's been happening since the early 70s to the whole world. The results of this action are vividly described in Dr. Andrew uh, Dixon White's book. 
The story of fiat money inflation, France, is one of great interest to legislators, to economic students, and to all business and thinking men. It records the most gigantic attempt ever made in the history of the world by a government to create an inconvertible paper currency and to maintain its circulation at various levels of value. It also records what is perhaps the greatest of all governmental efforts, with the possible exception of Diocletian's, to enact and enforce a legal limit of commodity prices. That's the manipulation uh, of the prices by the bullion banks, by the central banks, by, by the uh, ESF, plunge protection team. Every fetter that could hinder the will or thwart the wisdom of democracy had been shattered, and in consequence, every device and expedient that untrammeled power and unrepressed optimism could conceive were brought to bear. But the attempts failed. They left behind them a legacy of moral and material desolation and woe, from which one of the most intellectual and spirited races of Europe has suffered for a century and a quarter, and will continue to suffer until the end of time. <laughs> there are limitations to the powers of governments and of peoples uh, that inhere in the constitution of things, and that neither despotisms nor democracies can overcome. Legislatures are as powerless to abrogate moral and economic laws as they are to abrogate physical laws. They cannot convert wrong into right, nor divorce effect from cause, either by parliamentary majorities or by unity of supporting public opinion. The penalties of such legislative folly will always be exacted by inexorable time. While these propositions may be regarded as mere commonplaces, and while they are acknowledged in a general way, they are in effect denied by many of the legislative experiments and tendencies of public opinion of the present day. This book was written in the early, I think it was uh, around uh, 1912. Andrew Dixon White, he was the founder of uh, Cornell University. And I think he was an ambassador to Germany in the 1800s. The story, therefore, of the colossal folly of France in the closing part of the 18th century and its terrible fruits is full of instruction for all men who think upon the problems of our own time. So you can replace France here for the world right now. This is the colossal folly the world is <laughs> going through right now. Uh, yeah, this experiment in uh, monetary uh, recklessness, and it's getting out of hand. And that's why you need to read this book, in my opinion. If you haven't yet, uh, it's very, very interesting. It talks about all the symptoms of uh, uh, the resulting from this. And they're very similar to what we have now. And you, you'll see what I mean if you read the book. I'll put a link below uh, in the description, a free PDF. Uh, the other one uh, is a classic for me uh, by Murray Rothbard of the Austrian School of Economics. What has government done to our money and the case for 100% dollar? There you go. I won't go too much through it, but uh, suffice to say, I think uh, if you don't understand the monetary system, this is the book for you to read. One of the books. I'm sure there's some others, but uh, it's my favorite. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Please share it far and wide. Think about subscribing to the channel if you haven't yet. And you can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, BitChute, Steemit, and DTube. I wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.